All right, it's time for oil. So uh, I need to do oil, coolant. I have the exhaust disconnected, which isn't a big deal. Um, but first I need to figure out how much oil capacity I actually have. So what I'm gonna do is start filling in oil until it's up to the dipstick, measure how much so I know, okay, cold, uh, absolutely dry, this is how much this engine's gonna take oil wise. Once I know that, I'm gonna add maybe half a quart more uh, and then I'm gonna start cranking the engine to build up oil pressure. Now I have all the coil on plugs disconnected. Uh, so this engine will not fire. The only purpose uh, of that is I wanna build oil pressure. Once I have oil through the system, I'll check the dipstick again, uh, maybe top it off. And then, uh, then we'll move on to coolant slash water. Make sure we don't have any leaks of oil, I guess, or coolant. Then we might be ready for our first start. So I'm gonna get to it. I didn't completely purge the system, but it's definitely enough to get this thing started. We have oil, so oil capacity was interesting. So the pan itself, just the sump portion, is actually about four quarts. I was really surprised by that. Then I uh, built up oil pressure, got it to about 20 PSI of oil pressure, and then filled it and filled it and filled it. And we have, right now I have six and three quarters or six and two thirds a quart. My guess is it's about two thirds a quart over right now. So I think the entire system is about six quarts with the sump itself holding uh, about four, maybe, um, somewhere in that territory. Uh, but the engine itself, I mean, just being dry, uh, it needed to fill all those nooks and crannies. So it'd be really interesting to see what this thing is uh, when we're doing oil changes. So I just turned the ignition on and what I'm gonna do is purge the fuel pressure because this is a returnless system. There we go. So I'm just pressing this Schrader valve until the air stops coming out, if it ever stops coming out. I'm gonna cycle the ignition so I can get that fuel pump to run again. There we go. That made it run a little bit. Let's try purging some more. Now I have no idea the proper way to do this. I just assume this is what's supposed to be done to get the air out of the system. I have no idea if that's enough or not. I have no idea if that's normal. That's what you're supposed to see. Um, but we'll give this a go. So now I'm gonna connect the ignition or the uh, coil on plugs here. Pull this tape. So I'm gonna add the radiator fan later once I get the sway bar in, because I really uh, wanna know where that sway bar is before I attach this fan to this new radiator, because that is gonna matter. So those are connected. So let me do a mental check. I have oil, that's good. Looks like I got a catch can I need here. Ah, I think I remember this being over on the passenger side here. Oh yeah, look at that. That goes over here and then that grounds and that goes with the other thing grounds here. Crap. Just dented some of my radiator fins. Um, yeah, oil, I have water, that's what I need. Transmission, I put the shifter in. That is now in neutral, so I don't have any problems there. This thing does not have a clutch switch uh, for starting. Uh, figured that out. Yeah, let's, let's fire her up, see if it starts. So I have oil pressure and fuel pressure. Turn on this jump pack. Probably should have been charging this while it was sitting. Let's see here, I got ignition. Just with ignition, this thing should start, right? Hmm, what could that be? I have oil pressure, I have fuel pressure. Coolant temp. Coolant temp seems about right. I have fuel level on a gauge. And it does not want to start. Check these sensors here. Plug in the injectors. Oh, 
I don't think I plugged them in backwards. To be honest, I didn't look at the injectors themselves, but I'm pretty sure this is the way it went. I'm gonna have to find a picture, make sure I didn't put these injector backwards. The intake is good. So I have a mass flow sensor. I did put spark plugs in. I have the two sensors on the back of the cams. I think those are important. Those probably have something to do with the cam position. I didn't see anything down there for like a crank position or anything like that. So this thing must just work off of cams. And these are all tight. And these are in the right order. The ECU was good. I had a one, two, three on the ECU. I have an alternator, but that shouldn't matter. I can check cranking bolts. All right, with the accessory on. This is what I was afraid would happen. <laughs> Jeez. Well, back to good old troubleshooting. I'm gonna think about this a bit. Good time to take a break. See if I come up with any ideas on, on what this thing might be. <laughs> done a bunch of stuff. I replaced the throttle body. I replaced the mass airflow sensor. I've been chatting online a bit, uh, which I think it's one of the guys that owns the Ecotech Miata company. He mentioned that there's three red wires that need to be wired to the ignition source. And then there's one white wire that needs to be wired to battery power. So I went in, I found those and I rewired those. I really didn't see too many issues with them. Um, there was an extra wire going to the ignition, so I uh, removed that for now. I also detached that warning light that I reconnected, just in case. Uh, you never know, maybe that was causing the issue and then they just ripped that out with frustration. Who knows? But yeah, it's it's finally late enough in the, in the morning here that we can try to give it a test start. So, pop the kill switch. Hear the fuel pump, so that works. And I've been moving around relays a bunch too. I'm gonna have to pick a new one up today uh, just to verify, but let's see if this thing starts. <sighs> Not even a verbal. Let's try it again. All right, back to the drawing board. Got an update. So I've been talking back and forth with Matt at Ecotech Miata. He's been helping me troubleshoot. Basically, I've gone through the entire wiring harness, uh, rewired a few things. The good news is I know a lot more about these wiring harnesses now, and I know a lot more about what's going on with the wiring back here. Bad news is I probably burned maybe six hours troubleshooting. Also found out what this was, which is the amber light right there. That's a light for the ignition. And that was just tied into the ignition relay. And then it was supposed to have ground connected. The ground was never connected. So the light was never gonna work anyway. However, something Matt mentioned, going through and testing everything. I have my voltmeter here, ECUs apart, testing all of the different pins. He offered a bunch of different suggestions and I tested main power on the relay here. And this thing is dead not getting anything there, which leads me to a point that Matt mentioned, which is you need to have a cable going between the alternator and the starter. I assume the kill switch was handling that. However, when I look at a picture of what this looked like, see this big black cable? It's the same big black cable I have right here. It's not in the car. Uh, so I just discovered that. Um, I'm gonna put this in the car. I think this might actually solve our problem. Good Lord, the trouble you have when you don't understand a platform like this. If this was a BP4W, any issue, I've seen it before, that would be easy. This thing, whole nother beast. And I can't believe I forgot this. And in my haste, I threw it in the bin with brakes and suspension and all that. And I pay the price, uh, six hours, but we'll plug it in, see if this works. All right, just got done hooking up the battery. That means it's go time. Let's see here. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I was using the OBD2 reader to find the trouble code that Matt was able to help me with. But I think I'm wired up. Let's uh, do kill switch. That's good. Here, fuel pump. Oh. There we go. Pressure's good. Woo. And it shakes the car. 
car. I'm gonna check for leaks. Fix that too. Man, everything seems nice and smooth. Now there's no exhaust connected right now, so it's pretty loud. Yeah, oil pressure is still good. See, I got coolant temp, looks like that works, that's climbing. That is awesome. Well, there you go. I think I can finally end this video, uh, which I'm pretty happy about because now I can get all this uploaded and move on to the next thing. But it's in, it runs. Got some smoke on the header, that's normal. Just from oil, likely from the gloves. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe below. I'd really appreciate it. Stay tuned for more videos. Uh, next up, we're probably gonna raise the motor a little bit, uh, fix some of that clearance issue, uh, finish the suspension. We got some really big brakes coming. So pay attention to that. Uh, watch the feed, you'll see some videos. Really excited. Thanks for watching. Even though you're not with me, I appreciate you guys remotely being with me on this. Uh, it's been great. Thanks again.